The major organized crime and anti-corruption agency, MOCA, is an independent elite law enforcement entity with a primary interest in fighting the scourge of corruption and in bringing high-value criminals to justice. The Public Bodies Management and Accountability Regulations, which were passed in Parliament on Tuesday, sets out detailed rules and guidelines on how they should carry out their job. We get more from Simone Absalom Gale. The major organized crime and anti-corruption agency, MOCA, is an independent elite law enforcement entity with primary interest in fighting corruption and in bringing high-value criminals to justice. The regulations passed on Tuesday sets out detailed rules and guidance on how they should carry out their job. Opposition leader Mark Golding had some concerns about the regulations, one of which is the distinction between which cases should be investigated by MOCA and the officers of the Jamaica Constabulary Force. We see major gang offences, for example, being prosecuted, uh, I believe, by the police. And we hear about some important um, achievements that MOCA has been able to uh, get under its belt in relation to scamming and transnational crimes. But the disequilibrium that will exist between the procedural safeguards that are required of MOCA as an entity vis-a-vis -vis prosecution, well, investigation of serious crimes outside of MOCA by the, the, by the JCF is, is odd. It's, to me, it's, it's an anomaly. The opposition leader also notes that the regulations sets out procedures on how interviews should be done, but it's lacking in guidance on how they can be used in other areas, like a courtroom. But we know, for example, that in investigating offences, recording of conversations and so on take place outside the context of formal interviews and, and, and often provide critical evidence that can be used in court. Uh, and the regulations are totally silent on that. And that, to my mind, is an area which is somewhat lacking in specific specificity as to the applicable rules that should apply to that type of investigative technique. Attorney General Marlene Malahu Ford explained that the regulations were needed since MOCA personnel do not have policing powers. Just to remind the Honourable House that MOCA does not have general policing powers and so these rules are required to ensure that they operate squarely within the four corners of their enabling act. Unlike the police that have common law powers that are inherent in their duties, officers of MOCA have no such powers and that is why the rules are as detailed as they are. National Security Minister Dr. Horace Chang also notes that the police were not being left behind. MOCA, of course, as I said, is, tends to, the separation is not sharp defined, but like many things in law, but MOCA tends to deal with a lot of heavy crime that have international implications. So the transnational crime in both drugs and advanced credit fraud and a number of other things, they are heavily involved and work with international agencies and the local level heavily on corruption, um, while the police do do fraud investigation, I think the more complex corruption cases are always dealt with by MOCA. Um, gangs, they operate more at the intelligence level in that era. The next step in the legislation process is to get the approval of the Senate. If it's approved, the MOCA regulations will come into force on January 1, 2022. For the News on PBCJ, I'm Simone Absalom-Gale.